know what was on Jesus when he died on the cross? Power will die and power will be Let the master set you free. Let the master bring his peace to you. You have got to make this your foundation. How Jesus loved on the cross. Welcome again to Jesus. This answer ministry broadcast. I'm Pastor Robert Kale. I'm just telling y'all the Lord is so good. And we're just, I'm excited this week to, I'm going to begin to start a new series on the duty of man. The duty of man. Have you ever heard something like that? Well, I'm going to begin to expound on this. So uh, get your Bibles and go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. We're going to use this as a text. Uh, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Uh, you know, this really sums up uh, a Christian life. If, if, but I've got to explain it, um, especially uh, keeping his commandments. Because when you read this here in, in the Old Testament, it's really speaking under this dispensation. But we're going to have to take these words and bring them into the New Testament under a new dispensation. Uh, but, but fearing God really just means respecting him, reverencing him, honoring the Lord. And it's just so much in the church today that, that, that really do not honor the Lord. Uh, that doesn't respect and reverence him. Now, here's, here's the greatest way that you can respect the Lord. It's, it's the way that you receive his word. Uh, let's go to Proverbs um, chapter 1, verse 7. And we can, we can see here um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the fear, when, 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 when you have a respect and reverence for the Lord, I've learned something that you don't get to respect the Lord while you're learning, while you're going to church. The, the respect and reverence and honor for the Lord comes when you do what he say. And then understanding follows that. The, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. When, when you find people in church uh, who, 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 who don't, don't want to do what Jesus say, uh, they struggle in, in obeying the Lord. Uh, there, there's a fear, there's a reverence problem. And so um, I, I didn't have a great struggle with this because I grew up with my grandmama. And and, and uh, they, they loved me, and my great-grandmama, they loved me so much that I, I respected them I, I, uh, and had a, a reverence for, for, for them because of the way that she lived. Sometimes people, uh, you know, that didn't grow up with, with, with true anointed, Holy Spirit, uh, godly uh, men or women, you, you have to get in there with the Lord and let the Lord teach you how to respect and reverence him. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And so uh, we have to we have to allow the Lord. You, you just can't come up with this unless you've already been under where you really reverence somebody and respected them in your life. And a lot of people that done grew up hurt, done grew up bound, done grew up around drinking, drugs, cursing, uh, father not being a real father, uh, they, they end up not having respect, really, really kind of hating authority. And so the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now, I, when I first got, got saved in June 30th, 1988, um, and I've, I've taught this before, but let me teach it again. A lot of people <clears throat> read the Bible to learn, but I never read the Bible to learn. <clears throat> um, I, I read it to do what Jesus told me to do. That's the fear of the Lord. And a lot of people read it, and then when you read something like Jesus said, turn your other cheek. The first time I read that in 1988, 
I told the Lord, I said, Lord, soon as I get smacked, I'll turn another cheek. And then a few months later, it happened for preaching the gospel. And I turned another cheek, put my hands behind my back, and gave him another sign. And, and, and so, Jesus, the first time in 1988, I read, love your enemy. Bless them that curse you. I remember reading that for the first time. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for those which despitefully use you and persecute you. And, and, and I, I told the Lord Jesus, soon as somebody's my enemy, I'm going to do, I'm going to love them, bless them, do good, and pray for them. And I really didn't even know what none of that meant. But because of my obedience to step out to do what Jesus said, the understanding came. And what, what people try to do is when you try to understand the Bible, you're confused. Because you, you're living out of your intellect. You're not living out of your spirit. And, 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 and many times uh, people say, well, I just don't know if I can do that. See, see you're not reading the word to do it. Uh, I, I just, I just seen, you know, people in church struggle and struggle and struggle and struggle. And, and I asked the Lord Jesus, Lord, Lord, why I ain't like that? Why, why it seemed like the first two, three, four years I would say that, like God has some, some special on me that I, I didn't see on many people. And I asked the Lord, Lord, you know, why, why are you so good to me? And Jesus just, just responded and said. Because I don't hardly find many people who, who will do everything I say. And um, I, I mean, this thing back in your Christian life, have you done everything Jesus told you? Do you have that time? You've done everything that the Lord told you to do? Or you, you've always been quick to repent, quick to forgive in every situation? Or did you just kind of hold on to stuff? And this. You know, stayed a little mad. No, 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 you don't grieve the spirit. No, you don't grieve them. And still stay like that. I just hadn't done that. My whole Christian walk. And 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 so uh, uh when, when you have a true reverence, a true respect for the Lord, what you have a respect for is what he said. It's what the Lord said. And you can you can go in and look, uh let's look at uh, Mark chapter four. Verse 16, you, you'll see here, uh, you know, the people that respect the Lord and the people that don't. The sower soweth the word, and these are they by the wayside where the word was sown. But when they heard it, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their heart. So uh, if, if you, Matthew gave, a, uh, in Matthew 13, it gives a little bit different uh, scenario to this. In Matthew 13, 19, it says, Anyone who hears the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not. So see, see, when you read the Bible, you're not going to understand the Bible. You, you have to read it to do it and then trust the Holy Spirit to unfold and reveal this to you. This is your duty as a Christian is to fear, respect the Lord Jesus and to keep Jesus commandments. That, that's the duty of every Christian is to reverence the Lord Jesus. Because when you reverence Jesus, you're reverencing God. When you when you when you love Jesus, you will love God. And see, you're not supposed to jump to love God and you ain't came through Jesus yet. Now, you're not supposed to know God. Read the Old Testament and say, Oh yeah, this is how God is. No, not unless you came through Jesus and saw that that's that, that Jesus taught that, that that's the character that comes from Jesus. Now, let, me, let me show you something in the Bible. In John 1, verse 17 and 18, the Bible, now the Bible said, for the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to come back here to Mark. Uh, and, and listen in verse 18 in John uh, chapter 1, no man have seen God in time. Now, see, this is what get people. They, they think they done saw God. But the Bible tells us no man have seen God at any time. See? And what do you mean, Pastor? You ain't saw God where you can act just like him. You haven't saw God where you produce him exactly. 
So you ain't seen it. And, and, and Jesus said, no man has seen God at any time, but the only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he have declared him. Now, that, that's, that's a little bland. But when you read this uh, from the Amplified Bible, now listen carefully to this, because people got God confused in, in, in some areas. Uh, some people got him confused altogether. In uh, John 1 in the Amplified, no man has, now this is, this is, this is the Greek, but this, but it opens it up. No man has ever seen God at any time. You ever seen it? No, you didn't lie. The only unique son of God is invisible. The Bible said in Colossians 1 verse 15, that, that, that Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. God's been invisible to man. He spoke to man. He's revealed things to man. He, he, he's spoken by his spirit to man. But God has never revealed himself. Where man could act and live just like him. All God did to the Jew was gave some laws, some ordinances, uh, 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 some, some, some ceremonials. But God never revealed himself. Nobody in the Old Testament could love just like God. They couldn't do it. They weren't even born of God. How could they live like out of the nature of God and they didn't even have the nature of God? And nobody in the Old Testament had, had authority over the devil. Every time Israel got in trouble, they had to pray to God. God had to come down with his authority and whoop the devil. Now God don't have to come down in Jesus because God already done came down in Jesus. And so he's given us that authority. Hallelujah, in the name. So now listen, to, listen, to this. this will bless you. No man has seen God at any time, the only unique son, the only begotten God who is in the bosom, in the intimate presence of the Father. Now he, here it is, here it is. Jesus, he has declared God. Jesus has revealed God. And Jesus Brought God out where God can be seen. Woo! Hallelujah. You, did you? That's good news. I scared, what, what's so good news about that? You ain't got to wonder who God is no more. You ain't got to wonder what God do no more. Do God send tornadoes? And do God send hurricanes? You got, listen, God don't send that mess because if God sent them, Jesus rebuked them when he was on earth. And Jesus said, I only do what I see my father do. Now, why would God send a storm and then get his own self to rebuke it? Hmm? I mean, whoever was in charge of that wind, he told it, peace, be still. And that wind was not coming to be nice to people. And a lot of times people don't understand. You say, well, why do Pascal, why does stuff happen to, to good, innocent people? Let, let me tell you something. If you listen, if you don't have Jesus there helping you in the midst of a storm, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. It's bad to live on this earth and you don't you ain't taught in church how to trust the Lord and get God's protection around you. Amen. It's just it's just sad. So Jesus brought God out where he can be seen. The Bible said, the Bible said, Jesus has interpreted him, and Jesus has made him known. Jesus said, when you, when you really believe on me, in, in, in John 12, verse 44, he said, you really believe it on God who sent me. Jesus said, he that seeth me, seeth God who sent me. It's amazing that people have read these verses for years, and the Holy Spirit ain't never opened none of this up to them. And they'll make statements about who they think God is that don't line up with Jesus Christ. And now they're trying to exalt themselves above Jesus out of ignorance and don't even know that they're doing that. Because they ain't quoting Jesus. They're not quoting Jesus. And Jesus said out of his own mouth, I am the way. Jesus said, I, and, and, and they quote that, but they don't have no revelation in it. Jesus said, I'm the truth. And I'm the light. Now, now listen. Either you believe Jesus said that, then if you believe Jesus, that what Jesus said out of his mouth was from God. And God told Jesus to say that because he was. 
then you have to believe that that ain't no other truth outside of Jesus. Ain't no other way outside of Jesus. He is the perfect image of God. And if, if, if anything in the Old Testament, if anything in the epistles, if any statements don't line up with Jesus, they ain't the way. They ain't the truth. They ain't the lie. Because Jesus Christ said he was. And this is why people are so confused in church and so confused in their teaching and they're making God be something. That's not Jesus Christ. And Jesus done came and told you God sent him to reveal God to us, to interpret God, to make God known. And, and you can you can look at Jesus. Listen, any man that walk on this earth that never sinned, I don't need to look to nobody else to reveal God to me. Not Moses, not Job, not Jeremiah. And, and I definitely don't want Job to do it. And, and, and it's amazing that people read those stories and say, well, this is how God is. But Jesus said, when you see me, you see God. You don't never read that in the Old Testament. Nobody ever walked and said, now listen, y'all look at me all the time because everything you see, that's going to be God. You ain't never heard nobody talk like that. And really in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible said God spoke to the prophets of old and, and, and in the Amplified, it said he only revealed to them a portion of the truth. Jesus came to reveal the truth. Hallelujah. And so, so what I'm teaching y'all today is that there has to be a reverence for Jesus Christ. There has to be a reverence for Jesus' teachings that, that Jesus is speaking to the church on. Because some of Jesus' teachings ain't speaking to the church. And so you can't, you can't uh, grab everything Jesus say and give it to the church. You have to sometimes grab what Jesus say and give it to the Jews. And then, then there are times you have to grab some things he said and give it to the Gentiles. And then sometimes Jesus said things that were specifically uh, for the church. They, they were prophetic, like, like, like love your enemy. See, that was prophetic. The disciples never loved nobody. Uh, 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 man, they wanted to cut people's ears off and stuff. And so <clears throat> until they got born again and Jesus breathed on them, they really didn't even have the ability to live that a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I love you. And they really... Jesus took care of them, but they really saw uh, the revelation of his love on that cross. That's where they saw his love was on the cross. And they saw it with him healing people, delivering people, forgiving people, Jesus rescuing them, praying that they faith fail not. The Lord kept his love around them. And he told the father at the end, father, I've lost none except the son of perdition. That was Judas. And so, so listen now, at Kepler now, how you and I got to receive, if we're going to reverence the Lord, we, we've got to receive his word the right way. Now listen carefully at this. And these, these you don't want Satan, uh, 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 you, you, you read in the Bible trying to understand it, because the devil, when you don't understand it, because you ain't going to understand hardly nothing, you're just going to read stories. And, and the devil's going to come and, and steal that away from you. He's just going to keep you confused. But in verse 16, Mark 4, these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. You, you, you know, everybody's in one of these grounds. And, and, and uh, you, you, you're not in two of them. Uh, well, you could be in two of the wrong ones, but you can't be in the good ground. And have any other ground with you. So these are they which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word. Now this, this is this is the scenario with every one of these illustrations Jesus is giving in this parable, is everybody heard the word, but everybody didn't have a true respect for Jesus, a true reverence for Jesus, a true honor for him, and um. And so when they heard the word, immediately received it with gladness. I mean, left church on a cloud. Left church, I mean, just absolutely bubbling over with joy. But they had no root in themselves. Pastor Scales, they had no root. No, 
Now let me break down to you what, what root means. And this is what Jesus revealed to me. In Colossians 2, verse 6, it says, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk you in him. Now verse 7, rooted and built up in him. See, rooted and built up in Jesus giving you something and you going and living something. Jesus loving you and you going and living his love. Jesus forgiving you and you go live forgiveness toward everybody. Jesus healing you and you go and get others healed. And so if you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, <clears throat> so won't you in him. So did you receive anger uh, from Jesus? No, well, then you are not walking in. Did you receive peace from Jesus? Well, then you ought to walk in peace every day. Did you receive uh, forgiveness from Jesus? Well, you ought to go forgive everybody. See, it's not real hard. As you have therefore received, see, just think about it. Did you receive backbiting? Did you receive a, a, a lying and stealing? Well, you ought not steal. You are not lying no more if you didn't receive that from Jesus. And so Jesus, John, the apostle Paul said in verse 7, Colossians 2, rooted and built up in him. See, rooted and built up in Jesus. And saints, listen, let me tell you something. This is the only way you're going to be rooted and built up. You must be established in the faith, established in believing who Jesus is and what Jesus did. You must be established in that. And here's how you can tell when you're rooted that you abound with thanksgiving for what he's done for you. <clears throat> and saints, if you don't remember this, this is why you don't have no root in you. Because you don't remember how Jesus loved you on the cross. You don't remember he defeated all the works of the devil. You don't remember that Jesus took your sins away. That Jesus came to, to redeem you and he has redeemed you from the curse of you don't remember. And that's the reason you can leave church and have no root in you. Because you're not remembering, you're not living a life of thanksgiving for what the Lord has done for you on the cross. And this is this is the reason. Uh, now come come on back now to, to Mark. The Bible said you have no root. Uh, but the Bible teaches in Colossians 2 7, be rooted and built up in him, established in the faith. And get, get this now, get this. As you have been taught. Now think about that. See, this is why people in the church are not rooted and built up. They can leave church, go home, and just absolutely go through it. Let me tell you why. As they've been taught, they don't remember it when the storm comes. They don't remember. And, and, and that's the only way you can be rooted up in him is you have to remember what the master taught you. You have to remember what the master said. And I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm getting ready to close today. I'm going to pick this back up tomorrow. But one of, one of the great revelations the Lord gave me when I first got saved, and nobody taught me this, the, the Lord taught me. And that was I, read, I, I prayed four hours a day and read three chapters every day. I read Genesis, and at the end of Genesis, the Lord told me to go to Matthew and stay there. Then he told me to read Revelation. He said, don't ask no questions. Go back to Matthew and then and read. And the reason I, I, didn't, I didn't have a lot of questions for Jesus because I was only looking to do what he said. And then what, what I would do is pray, and I would ask the Lord to reveal what, what, this, what this meant, what this meant. And then I'd leave it alone, and, and I would walk in what he had revealed to me. I never lived in and, and, and or tried to live in something I didn't know because I didn't know. So I just stayed with what he had showed me. And listen carefully at this. That's why I never stayed confused because I knew the Lord knew everything. He, he could work out anything. But this is what I did. 
that I believe uh, people people are missing. I ask the Holy Spirit every day for years and still do to bring back my remembrance. Don't let Satan steal what I read today. And at the end of the day, late on that night, I said, Lord, bring that back. And I could go back over what I read that day by the Spirit. And I, I just believe people are not, not living this right because they ain't getting the Holy Spirit to help them. And they're not continuing in what they've been taught. They're not remembering it and abounding with thanksgiving. That's the reason they don't have no root when they're and they get offended when the storm comes. <clears throat> I want to make available for you this six CD series called The Duty of Man. Oh, it's excellent. And um, on the screen is our address. You can go to robertscaleministries.org. You can order these with your credit card online. Or you can write us and mail us, send us a check for $30 or more to Jesus is Answer Ministries, Post Office Box 292-112, Nashville, Tennessee. 37229. And saints, if you order these, I'll send you a free copy of my book, God's Grace Explained. And I'm telling you that these will absolutely bless your life. They'll give you insight and wisdom of, of, of how to really get Jesus to work in your life in a greater way. Amen. And so order these today, and I, I know there'll be a tremendous blessing to you. Also, I want to invite you all to Jesus as a church, a uh, church that's alive, it's worth the drive. Uh, our, our address is on the screen, 332 West Main Street, Watertown, Tennessee, 37184. Uh, Saints, I tell you, you can go, we stream our services live, and you can go on our podcast, and I'm telling you, and watch the services, and we really would like for you to come. We know that your life will be changed. If God is dealing with you, then you need to obey the Lord and uh, and come and be blessed. And uh, we uh, we really, uh, the whole church is built on Jesus' teaching and living in him, Jesus loving us. That's a difference. So uh, I look forward to seeing you. Also, I want to thank my partners and friends. Thank you so much for your financial support. You can go online to robertscaleministries.org and donate uh, through through our, our, our web page. And I thank you so much for helping me to get the gospel out. Saints, I'm telling you, uh, it's my partners and my friends that help me stay on the air and obey God and do what the Lord tell me to do. So thank you so much for helping me. Well, my prayer for you is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God from Jesus as the ministry. I'm Pastor Robert Scales. Remember now, his commandment was as he loved you on that cross, go live that toward everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.